Hello everyone, welcome to another Java for Testers tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about constructors in Java. So when we talk about the constructors, constructors in Java are used to create the instance of the class. Now we have understood what the class is and class is basically a blueprint and then when you create an object of that particular class, then the instance of that class is created and you know a memory is allocated for that particular object in the JVM in the memory. Now constructors are very similar or you, you they look very similar to the methods and the there is very minor difference between the constructors and method when you look at the constructor and method separately. Constructors do not have any return type and the name of the constructor is exactly same as your class name. So let me go ahead and create a class. So let me create a package first. I will say com.rcv.constructors to demo all the information about the constructor. I will create a class within this constructors package and I will say constructor examples examples all right finish it let me include main method as well all right okay so now this is our class name now in order to create an object of the class we have already seen we use the keyword new followed by the name of your class okay so this creates an object in the memory and then we have the instance variable so I can say whatever name I want to give and this allocates a memory in the JVM. So if I run this particular it won't print anything but internally whenever you create an object of a class the memory gets allocated and a default structure gets called by the JVM. So every object that you create in Java has the default constructor or the default constructor is implicitly called. Now let's talk about the types of constructors in Java. So we have already seen that there is a default constructor which is called implicitly whenever you create a new object. The other types are no argument constructor and parameterized constructor. Now say for example you want to explicitly define the constructor and you don't want to implicitly or call the constructor implicitly. So what you need to do is the format of defining the constructor is that constructor name should be exactly the class name, right? And the access modifier, say for example, public in this case, and that's it, right? So this is the constructor or no argument constructor because in these parentheses, I haven't provide, provided any arguments. Now, if I provide any return type, even if it is void, you will see that it complains that the method has the constructor name. The constructor name has to be exactly similar to the class name. So that gets identified and you have to change it to constructor. So there won't be any return type. So let's understand the key things. So no return type, right? And same name as the class name so these are the two key things whenever you are defining the constructor now this is the no argument constructor let me print something in here and I'll say no argument constructor and the second constructor is the parameterized constructor so whenever when you pass the parameters in these parentheses so for example I am passing a parameter which is int i or this constructor accepts an integer so i'll say here integer or let me change it to integer constructor then i can have other constructor as well which can accept multiple parameters so it can accept integer or two integers so that's possible as well right and then other constructor which accepts other data types so I can say string s yes, in this case so here I'll say two integer 
constructor and here I'll say string okay now I have four constructors which are explicitly defined in this particular class now the relevance of uh, defining the constructor explicitly is basically that you want to specify the values say for example you want to create an object of type square so you have a square class so square whenever you are trying to create an object of the square class it should have certain dimension right so it should have the length only then it will create an object now if you don't specify the length while creating an object what it will do is it will allocate the memory but the actual value it will be either null or zero okay so in these sort of scenarios where you want explicit where you want to explicitly specify or whenever somebody is creating an instance of that particular class to have the values so for example this here i want to provide unless and until i'll provide the integer type in this particular uh, you know uh, constructor then it won't create an object so if you want to specifically provide the value then you define the explicit constructor or the parameterized constructor in this case now how are these constructor called so for example in this case if i run this program now right so first time it didn't print anything because it called the implicit constructor okay now we have the constructors defined so let's see what is it is going to print in this case now you'll see it has printed no argument constructor because now you have defined the constructors explicitly in this particular class and it has mapped or it has matched that there are no arguments being passed and it has saw that there is a constructor which doesn't accept any you know argument and it has printed no argument constructor right now say for example if i comment this out okay what will happen now if i run this program okay you'll see that unresolved compilation problem the constructor is undefined okay so if you have explicitly defined the constructor in the class then it won't call the default constructor or the implicit constructor that is there that it by default calls all the time that default constructor gets called only if there are no explicit constructor so if i comment all these constructors only then that implicit constructor will be called so you you won't get any error in this case right so if i execute this now there is no error okay as soon as you will define an explicit constructor then you have to specify or this you know no argument constructor has to be there if you are not passing any argument now say for example i am passing an integer here okay now based on whatever argument you are passing it get matched to the constructor it will check whether that particular type of constructor is there and then it will call that particular constructor and you'll see that integer constructor has been called okay similarly if you want to specify any string here say i passed on string then this string constructor will be called all right so that's the brief about the constructor and the relevance about the constructor so the relevance is basically you if you don't want to call the default constructor or the implicit constructor and your class has say for example that the same example we took for the square or for the rectangle that whenever you are you want to force the user to provide the dimension and you don't want the memory allocated and have the you know memory allocated in jvm and have the value as null or zero then you define the constructor explicitly so that user passes those values and whenever the object of that particular class is created the object has the relevant values already instantiated right so that's the uh, significance of the constructor the types of constructor and how the constructors work and map in the java so these three are the parameterized one and these this is the no argument and the default constructor is the implicit constructor which gets called if you don't define any explicit constructor in your java program now let's let me go back and in the selenium webdriver document i'll show you 
that we have seen many times, right? So whenever you create an object of the Chrome driver, so here you'll see if you go to this particular class, Chrome driver is a class and if you scroll down, you'll see the constructors, different constructors being defined. So Chrome driver, which is the node argument constructor, this is an explicit constructor, but what it does is it uses or it creates the new Chrome driver using the default server configuration. So whatever default server configuration for the Chrome browser is there on your you know, machine, that configuration, that server configuration is being used to create the object, Chrome driver object, right? If you call this Chrome driver. The second one is, this one is deprecated. Here you'll see another constructor creates a new Chrome driver instance with the Chrome driver service. So if you have, you know, any specific service or options that you want to specify. So here, if you see the other constructors as well, Chrome driver with Chrome driver service and options, Chrome driver with Chrome options. So different constructors are available for the Chrome driver. So one, two, three, and four, these two are being deprecated. So four constructors are being still used for the Chrome driver. Similarly, if you browse through other um, drivers, so Firefox driver or Edge driver, you'll find similar sort of cons constructors, which enable you to create an object with certain configuration, right? So that's the whole point of having the constructor in Java. So that's all for this tutorial. Hope you like it. Please do share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.